Action. Good work. Oh. It's Monday. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it is Tuesday. Wait. It's late Monday. Oh, it's covered up again. That's the problem. Um, welcome back, everybody. Um, it always seems like it's such a long time. When I think we because we've had a couple of Friday. Saturday classes. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. But it is Tuesday, and um, back with another edition of Facebook Live. Uh, I know you're all surprised by that. Hope um, you all are enjoying Amanda and Cindy's um, doing Mondays, Mondays for us. That's right. We watched a little bit of it yesterday. It, it was cute. It's super cute. Oh. Yeah. Um, weather's incredible today, by the way. So I wonder if we got anybody even watching us. Um, I might like, leave right now. I know. Tell me. It's. It, uh, I went out a little bit ago and it was beautiful. So love fall in Colorado. It's perfect. Um, announcements? Do we have some announcements? We do, but I have a lot of sewing, so oh, we're gonna do, do those we're gonna that. do the announcements during the sewing. I okay, think. okay, let's do the giveaway then. Okay, we, we it's have... National Coffee Day. Is it really? Mm -hmm. oh, I need to do that. And you didn't drink coffee today. I, guess. I know. By the way, Starbucks has this pumpkin spice like cream, cold foam oh, cream. Geez, yeah, it is to die for. Is actually, it? oh my gosh, it's so. You like good. lick the cup when you're done. <laughs> 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 you have to lick the cup. It's a requirement. It's serious. Mm. You're, you're almost got a wreck licking the cup. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, you gotta go get that. Do you that. know where this is going to? <laughs> it's the. <laughs> Here, it's on this box. We're giving it to a brand new lady. That's maybe. right. Who just joined us, Bonnie Buckholtz. Bonnie Buckholtz. Bonnie Buckholtz, you are the winner of. Our super cute snowman, snowman. In Florida. Oh, that's so perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> didn't think that one good well. It's really? perfect. We're going to send them a snow thing in Florida. <laughs> what? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. my. So, congratulations, Bonnie. That's what she's going to do with it. That's right. The weather is cool and windy with the scent of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. By the way, I got a joke. Can I tell my joke? Yes, go ahead. All right. No, oh, boy. I'm pretty happy with this. It's another blonde joke. Sorry, Christine. It's fine. Oh, oh you know joke. what? Good blonde joke. So, actually, one of our customers, Lynn, <laughs> posted one onto my Facebook, and I had to ask Andrew. I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> he was like, are you serious? And read it to me. And then after he read it to me, I, it, I got it. But I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll it was really funny. <laughs> okay, so a blonde wanting to earn some money decided to hire herself out as a handyman type and started canvassing a wealthy neighborhood. She went to the front door of the first house and asked the owner if he had any jobs for her to do. Well, you can paint my porch. How much will you charge? The blonde said, how about $50? The man agreed and told her that the paint and ladders that she might need were in the garage. The man's wife inside the house heard the conversation and said to her husband, does she realize that the porch goes all the way around the house? The man replied she should. She was standing on the porch. A short time later, the blonde came to the door to collect her money. You're finished already? He, he asked. Yes, the blonde answered. And I, left, I had leftover paint, so I gave it two coats. Impressed, the man reached into his pocket for the $50. And by the way, the blonde added, it's not a porch, it's a Ferrari. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That that yes, I do. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. Oh my. Uh, I thought that was funny. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> um, today, Kate is going to do a super cute serger project. You've had this, like, you've been carrying it around forever, I've haven't been, you? Yeah, this one I've had kind of at the back of my mind for a while, and I decided that we just need to get it done. Yep, so Lily gave her dress size today. So, hint, hint. So if you have granddaughters, you're probably going to want to make one. <laughs> That's right. And it's all done on the serger, so it's a serger project. We haven't done a serger project in a long time, we so hopefully you guys will have fun with this one. Okay, so we're going to get going because yep, there's a lot of stitching. Yeah, you've got a lot of, of sewing. Stitching. Okay. Do you want to do it? And... Here, you do it really quick. Okay, good. Hopefully, Bonnie, Bonnie, you heard your name. You won. Bonnie Buckholtz is watching. Oh. Yep. 
We gave you this cute little snowman for your Florida home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I don't have a finished project to show you. <laughs> except on paper. There you go. You want to show them what they're doing? So we Oh, are it is doing, so cute. It's called the Carnation Twirly Serger Skirt. So if you have a little girl, this is just the perfect thing because you know how they want to twist and twirl and show everything off. <laughs> so you can use um, a jelly roll, okay? The problem with jelly rolls is that you won't get um, you won't get a whole row out of one particular fabric. You would need to join them together. So I am choosing, if you want to pan down on my fabric here, I'm choosing just to use two fabrics and alternate them. And the little girl I'm sewing this for loves is such a girly girl. So mine is going to be all in pink and white. Is that pink? That looks orange. It's definitely pink. I'm really getting concerned about you. <laughs> okay, like so peachy let's, it let's is peachy talk about orange. this. So these directions will be posted up on our website, but they're actually on the Baby Lock website right now. And it consists of six rows. So row one, and these are all two and a half inch strips. Row one is one strip of fabric. Row two is two strips of fabric. Row three is three strips of fabric plus about 12 inches. Row four is six strips of fabric less 10 inches. Row wow, this is confusing five already. Is 10 strips of fabric less 6 inches. And row 6 is 15 strips of fabric plus about 22 inches. <laughs> so it, yeah, good luck with this one, ladies. It takes a lot of fabric. So I have done a little <laughs> bit of the prep work. So row one is one strip of fabric. Row two. I thought you said it was six strips of fabric. One strip of fabric. Oh. Row two is two strips of fabric that we're going to join together short edges to make it one long strip. And we're just going to set up our surges for the basic four thread. So you're just doing a four thread overlock? Just doing a four thread overlock. Were you doing ruffling? I was a little bit earlier. I'm going to be ruffling, is that the question? So right now I've taken my two strips and made them one long strip. Is this for a child size? We're I made talk, one years ago that. for myself and it didn't have that much. Okay, we are gonna talk about what to age um, this will fit and how you can change that a little bit, okay? The one she made me was not that big, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so row three is three strips of fabric plus about 12 inches. So here's one. Two, three, plus 12. Oh, I see what you're doing there. Okay. So what we're doing is we're taking each row and we're making it into one long, long row. row. So that's the first thing you're going to do. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take, and it is easier if you lay them all by the side of your serger so you've got them all going along. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take row number one and we're going to search along one edge. Is this where you're doing the rolled hem or no? no. Oh, okay. This is just neatening and one side. Oh, I see. And you're not, are you cutting anything off? Barely anything, just little whiskers. So I'm gonna show you guys, she's just barely cutting. Just barely cutting anything off. Perfect.
I hope all you have surgers. <laughs> I want to know if I'll model it for them since you made it for me. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> okay, so we've prepared one edge of row one. The next thing we need to do is to prepare the bottom edge of our skirt. And we're going to do that with a rolled hem. Oh, cool. So to do a rolled hem, we are going to remove our left needle. You are joining strips with a straight join, Roseanne. It was not at an angle, so it's just a straight join on those. You're just making long, long strips by surging on the very ends. So the first thing I've done is removed my left needle. And the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to use an embroidery thread. Hopefully you guys all know how to set up your sergers for rolled hem. And this thread is going to go into our upper looper. So I'm going to remove the current thread out of my upper looper. And with our handy dandy baby lock, it's super easy to thread. So to thread, we're going to put this down to the threading position. We're going to turn our ham wheel until our tubular loopers connect right there. We're going to put our thread into the threading port of our upper looper. We're and going to push on the pump. Oh, you didn't give me a chance. Do that again. No. That was magic. We've got lots to sew today. Uh oh, okay. Uh, um, is this all on the instructions? It is. Yes, yes, Kathy, it is all on the instructions. And. I am going to just do a little test sew on a piece of fabric here to see if we have a pretty stitch. Are you on D? Um, I'm going to be. You see how I saved her there, ladies? You're welcome. So there is our pretty rolled edge. Isn't it beautiful? Now. I love sergers. I have 15, <laughs> 15 times 42 inches. So I'm going to be here for just a couple of minutes searching <laughs> this. And meanwhile, Christine is going to talk about some new things that we've got going on and some new fabric bundles and a new class and a few other things. I so just want you to show them to get started. it started. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So what we want to do is we want to, I'm just going to use my thumb and push up on my foot. Oops, you know what? I was actually going to go ahead and change my foot out to my clear foot so I can really see my threads well. So we're actually going to use, this is one of my favorite feet on the surges. So it's the clear view foot. And now I can really see where my fabric is and I can really um, get this positioned underneath the foot. And we do not want to really trim anything off this other than if you pan out just a little bit, Patrick, they can see. So if, I've, if you've got some um, edges like this. Trim off your fuzzies, ladies. So we're just going to literally just trim off any little bits that we can. This fabric was actually cut about a month ago and has been transported forwards and backwards in my backpack from home to work. And yes, so, you're sewing right sides up for this stitch, ladies. So it's going to be right sides up. And I'm going to show you what the stitch looks like. It's actually a really, really beautiful stitch. For those of you who have a serger, you can see it's it rolls over to the other side. You guys can see that. It's just a beautiful stitch to finish the end of the dress. Um, 
most surgery models, Denise, have a clear view foot. I, I, I mean, I've, I can't answer that. Baby Lock does on all their models, and I imagine most people do, or most uh, brands do. And yes, this foot would come in the foot kit. Um, do some of the machines come with it? No. No, okay. None of the machines come with it, but it would come in the foot kit. And yeah, Tina, um, what we're making, we don't have a sample of it because there's a lot of sewing involved, but we have a picture of it. So she's making this cute little, it's called the Carnation Twirly Serger Skirt. Say that 10 times fast. They wanted to know if you could, you could sew fishing line no, it's not, it's not going to work really well on a serger. I mean, you can sew fishing line into a road hem and create your own, like, ribbon and things like that. We did that on an earlier live. But you wouldn't want to, this skirt is going to be weighted enough. You wouldn't want anything else of weight on it. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to continue to sew this. Okay, she's got a lot of serging, so Christine and I are going to come over so you guys don't get drowned by sound and show you some fun stuff we have. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things. Um, so we did mention yesterday, we have put in for Ginger's Kitchen. So we do have that sample here. Um, so we are going to do this as a virtual class. Um, so this is an older um, project from Kimberbell, but it is super cute and why not, right? Um, so this class is going to be November 4th and November 18th. So the first part is going to be the embroidery. Second part is going to be the sewing. Um, so you have, um, there is a CD for this. There is a embellishment kit, which is actually new as well. So last year when they came out with this, they, we kind of put our own embellishment kit together, but they do actually have one now. And then there is a fabric kit, okay? So if you buy any of those two components, or if you did buy, then that class is going to be free for you. Um, so if, if not, the class is just $20. Um, but the fabric kit is $34.99. The embellishment kit is $24.95. The CD is $24.99. Um, and... <laughs> yeah, Kate is about to take off here. So she's, <laughs> she's absolutely no. cruising over there. Can you hear that? <laughs> okay, then one more thing. Um, this fabric is something new that we got in, and so we have made some half yard bundles of it. Um, and it is this super, super, super cute oh, it is gnome. Adorable. It's called the Timber Gnome fabric. Um, so we have made some bundles. Um, so there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, fabrics in here. So it has some snowman and the black with red check, uh, snowflake, um, some more of the gnomes, black with white, and some snowflakes. So these are $34.99. Um, we do only have so many here of this particular collection. Now we do have some of the other they're ones. They're half yard so, cuts, right? Yep. Okay, so, yeah, so they're half yard cuts of each fabric. Um, and so we can make more bundles. They just might not be these all these exact same fabrics. Like um, there's another, there's a dark, there's a black with a snowman on it. So um, we do have other ones that we can make. It just might not be all the same fabrics I just showed you, but we do have other fabrics. So these are the Timber Gnome um, fabric bundles and they are really, really, really cute. They are super cute, by and the I way. I love the gnomes. Me too. So, um, okay. Um, you want to talk about this real quick yeah. too? Okay, so um, we did announce this last month as well. So every month, um, for it was last month, this month, and then November, um, OESD has a uh, collection. Whereas if you spend $70, $79.95. $79.95. Uh, <laughs> um, you get the collection. And so this one is really cute. Like... Um, ornaments and uh, is it a tree too? 
Yeah, it's got all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff. Crosses and ornaments um, and blocks. So this and, is the one for October. So if you guys want to um, get in on that, you so this can. will start October first. But we wanted to show you what the new one. So we're, we've got two days left. I guess we should have showed it tomorrow, huh? That's but right. that's okay. So. So, but that is um, really cute. So it's just a little design pack from um, OESC, and this is retailed at seventy five ninety nine. So. A not money. a bad deal that's wow. right Absolutely. Okay. so and that's all the way through the month of october by the way and then a couple other things that we wanted to show you today so we had seen this you want to tell her to be quiet are they saying so? no <laughs> um, so i wanted to show you this because it's really cute so this is the tri stand design which we've shown before it is a new uh pre-order but instead of putting it on the tri-stand trifold, we got these hangers in where it has the slit here that you can put them in and then you could use it as more That's of like a really wall hanging. That's really cute. Yeah, I like that yeah, a lot. A what a great thing. idea. So instead of doing the tri-stands, you could still do it the same, but um, it gives it a little bit of a different feel, which I really like. Um, so we got some of these in um, and I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I don't. I think there are... 16? Kate. Kate, how much were those? I'm sorry? 14.99. 14 14.99. 14.99 for so those little hangers. So, kind of a fun thing to do with all the different pricing. If you, you know, one that doesn't have a place to put them, now you can put it on the wall. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then, I think this is the last thing that we were going to show. Which, these, I haven't even seen these before. Um, the Make It Merry Mini Wall Hanging Pillows. So Aww. these are really Aww. cute. So you stuff them and then hang them on the wall? They're know. not stuffed. No, nope, they're really cute. Oh, wait. Do you stuff and put they them on the wall? They aren't stuffed because we didn't have time for a launch. But if we put ribbons on them, they would be great little wall hangings. Yeah, are these would be cute. Hangers. Yeah, for like a nursing home or something. Yeah. That would be really cute. Okay, so we um, do have the designs in for those which is really cute, $16. Um, it has a bunch of different ones. So Val has sewed out some of the samples here. Um, and it looks like she just did it on felt. So that new Kimberbell felt would look really cute on there. Um, and it has a bunch of different sayings and that you could do. This one put like bows and bells on top. Yeah, those are adorable. Cute. Yeah. All That's right. Janine Babbage. She's one of our yes. favorites too. We like her. Yes, this is Janine Babbage as well. Is it the forever? Yep. Well, yeah, it's a tri stand. That's a good point. Yeah, she, she's famous for her tri stands. Yes, they're easy. Yep. Fun gifts. All right. Good deal. Should we go tell her we're done? Yeah, I don't want to interrupt her. <laughs> Check out what she's done while we're gone. You want to walk to the other end of the room? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, check this out. This is so cool. Here, literally, I want to. I want them to get an appreciation for how much. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, go walk. This is going to be a chubby, chubby little girl. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this is a ton of fabric. This is crazy. So Susan, she is making a little girl's dress, believe it or not. And I'll show you the picture here. It's a skirt. Where's the picture at? You know what I just thought of? We should see if Matt or Amanda will allow Lily to come in tomorrow and model it. Yeah, that's a good idea. By the way, I had a question earlier on the um, Clearview foot. Oh, shoot. Do you have any idea how much the third view foot is? Could you look it up for me? Here's what we're doing. Oh, yeah. 
And while she finishes, here's what we're doing again. So it's gonna eventually turn into this beautiful little skirt for a little girl. Oh, really? <laughs> Sherry, that drink from Starbucks is called a pumpkin cream cold brew. Are you almost done? I am. It's crazy. This is the easy path. $21.99. The Clearview foot is $21.99, and then of course you get your 20% off today. And Kate's making too much noise for me to talk. Yes, I can show the bundle, Mary. So here's the bundle. These are half yard cuts of seven different fabrics. So three and a half yards. You like my advanced math skills? Pretty good. Okay, so it has this gnome fabric in it that says timber on it. It, it reminds me of a little snowman. Thank I mean, a you. little uh, Santa Claus. And then the snowman, which I think it's really cute that all their faces are like hidden, like their eyes, and the same on the gnomes. <laughs> I think that's cute. Okay. Don, moving, the embroidery thread on. in the um, the embroidery thread in the stitch that Kate was doing is in the upper looper. She's doing a three thread rolled hem for what she was sewing there. This that's cute really too. Really cute too. This one's my favorite. Mm -hmm. He's. A lumberjack gnome. Mm -hmm. Isn't he cute? Yes. Hold on. Hold, please. And that one. They're all really adorable. Again, half yard cuts in that bundle. And we can always, there's different fabrics, not a lot, but we will make more in substitute fabrics if we have to. Oh, I threw them away. You threw all the fabrics away? No, I threw the directions away. Okay. So. Once you have completed that hem, <laughs> and you'll realize very quickly that it's a lot easier to hem this before it gets attached because you don't have the weight of the mm, rest of the skirt. Good call. On there. Very so smart. So you you do want to make sure that you do this hemming before, and by far this is going to be the quickest way to hem. 15 strips of fabric. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to. Um, Put the um, serger back over to a basic four thread. <laughs> not to make you nervous or anything, but Steve Jeffrey's watching. So no, he's not. <laughs> he's <really happy>. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi. Hi, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the machine back over to a basic four thread. So I'm going to remove the, the decorative thread that I put on there, which is the one in the upper looper. So we're going to go ahead and remove that one. We're going to go ahead and put back on a regular spool of serge thread in its place. And we're going to remove the pink thread that was in the upper looper completely out of the threading path. And now we're going to go ahead and re-thread the upper looper. So the thread is going to come up and over the thread guide, straight down through your tension. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it into the threading port that has the letter U on it. So, yes, there are a whole bunch of different foot kits, by the way, for these machines, Karen. You can get a six-foot pit... Um, <laughs> a, a six foot pack you can get a up all the way up to a 30 foot kit so for these sergers so um there are a whole bunch of different options for you and just give us a call we give extra discounts on those too by the way so give us a call and we'll tell you about all of the different foot kits for you so because we're getting ready to thread the machine again we do want to go ahead and put the lever down to the threading we're going to again turn our ham wheel and if Patrick gets over here, we'll be able to see when these tubes get connected right there. Now we can go ahead and push on our threading button. And watch button. the magic. 
Did you see that thread come out of there? Isn't that cool? So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to reinsert the needle that we took out a few moments ago. 630 inches of hem is what Roseanne said that equaled. It felt like it. <laughs> the bad thing awesome. is, it's just, it's um, kind of noisy for you to be able to talk about anything else. So we're gonna go ahead and we are inserting our left needle. And yes, Don, we do sell the Solaris trolleys. And again, any products that we, we talk about during these lives. <laughs> I got the screwdriver. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> um, any product that we um, talk about during these lives, you do get a discount on. So. And now we're going to go ahead and re-thread our left needle. So it's going to go through the overlock number one needle threading path up here, directly down through your tension. So she's setting up for a four thread overlock now, everybody. So again, for you, those of you following along at home, we went from a rolled hem to a four thread. We started off on a four thread, then went to a rolled hem, and now we're going back. Oh, I see, good. And so the serger that I'm using today is the Baby Lock Triumph, and it does have jet air threading for the needles also. And I've got a thread cord up in here. Yeah, you're using, um, again, the Triumph is a little bit different. You're going to be using the EL series needles when you're using your serger. So it's just an EL series that we have for our needle choice here. So what we're going to do is we are going to bring down the air threading component that will thread the needle for me. This is the coolest thing ever, by the way. And then up across the top here, it does have chain cover or overlock. So we wanna make sure it's set to the overlock needles. And then I like to give myself a new cut on my thread. And here, let me see if I can get them in here without your big got, hands in the way. Thanks. We've got a little button here to press. And it sucks the thread through her out of her hand and into the needle. Isn't that cool? And then it threads it. Woohoo! And like any time you're starting a new surging stitch, you always want to do a test sew. So we're going to go ahead and put this back to surging. Now the baby locks also have the... Um, the automatic thread delivery system which basically means no tensions so this is a tensionless machine so we we are going to make sure that we have the machine set to the right stitch that we want to do so our basic four thread is going to be stitch a and that doesn't matter which one of the baby lock surges you have if you've got the automatic tensions you are going to set your stitch to stitch a did I get that behind there I didn't can you got it? I think I did, yeah. And we're just going to go ahead and do a test sew. We're going to put our stitch length back to the normal setting. And Yay. here is our basic four thread, which I know it's white on white and it's going to be hard for you to see, but you can trust me, it's a beautiful stitch. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to Oops. gather on mm -hmm. the serger. So in order to make the serger gather, we have a lever on the right hand side of our machine. So we're still using our basic overlock stitch A, which is our four thread, but this is our feeding mechanism. So what we're going to do is we are going to tell the feed dogs to work twice as hard. So we're gonna set it to two, which means that the um, front set of feed dogs is going to feed the fabric twice as fast as the back set of feed dogs. And in conjunction with that, we are going to be using a baby lock foot called the ruffling foot. So the ruffling foot is a um, probably one of my most favorite serger feet. Um, and basically it has a tongue on the underneath part of the foot that allows us to put some of the fabric underneath, some of the fabric in between the foot and the tongue, and it will gather and attach our fabrics all in one operation. 
So I have just set the machine back to the basic four thread and put on my um, gathering foot. We're going to take row one. Now, if you remember on row one, we surged one side. That side needs to be to the left. Row one is going to be um, going to be used here in just a moment. But the first one we're going to put down is actually row two. So row two goes underneath the presser foot, completely underneath the presser foot, all the way back to the needles. Row two, row one, I'm sorry, row one is going to go right side down into the slit of the foot. Why not a jelly roll? Um, why not a jelly roll? A jelly roll with this skirt would be like, would be like making a um, a scrappy quilt because mm. you can't get the same rows all the way around. I would want the same fabric going all the way around on a row and because you need 15 strips for the last row, you would need 15 of the same fabric strips. So what we have here is we have the fabric that's going to gather right side up under the foot completely the fabric that we are attaching it to which is going to be our flat piece that will not ruffle is right side down into the foot and i like to just take a couple of stitches in and then we're going to talk about what we need to do here so the fabric on the bottom is what's going to gather. We want to make sure that we don't have a lot of strain on that fabric. You want to make sure that it is free moving into the machine. The fabric that it's attaching to is, um, you can keep a little bit more pressure on there, but you also want to keep the two fabrics separated. So I like to hold up my first fabric and I like to put my hand underneath my second fabric to make sure it's feeding into the machine and you also do not want to barely trim anything off on this what you it? want to keep the raw edges of the fabric against the blade edge go ahead christine would a rolled hem work on a on t-shirt material um yes it will Yes, it will, Patty. And um, Susan, this is the most, like the top of the line serger for baby lock is the Triumph. Yes. But any basic four thread serger will do this. Yes. I'm doing today. Yep, we're not doing any of the cover stitch or chain stitching or anything. So it's just your um, basic four thread will do that. But the Triumph is the top of the line for baby lock. In a perfect world, these two should finish completely even. Remembering that we had two of the pink strips to one of the white strips. How perfect is your world? It's pretty damn perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit off. Um, Patrick, yeah. what is the difference between the EL705CF and the EL705SUK? CF is called chrome finish. So chrome finish is going to have that chrome How coating cute. on the outside of it. And then the SUK is the um, the stretch oh, finish. Oh, it does stretch. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, uh, Patrick had a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, sucks. so this is row one and row two complete. And I have to tell you that was the easiest row to do. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take row three, which is our white. This is the one that's gonna gather. And it's going to go right side up underneath the foot. Under the foot is the one that gathers. I believe the gathering foot does come in some one of the foot kits, doesn't it? It comes in, I think, I think all it, of them. Yeah, I do think any of the foot kits for the serger, the gathering foot does come in those. So now, we need to attach row three onto row two, right sides together. So this is where it's a little bit tricky because now we don't have a flat strip to work with. We're working with an already gathered piece. 
So this is gonna go into the slit on the foot. Go ahead and get it started. That allows you to be able to put pressure on these fabrics. And this is what I'm trimming off, just barely anything. And I'm not gonna be able to go as fast on this one because I'm having to make sure that my second strip, which was my pink strip, is going in flat. But because it's already gathered and attached to strip number one, it does make this a little bit more of a challenge. And the whole time we are stitching right sides together. important to make sure that you keep these fabrics separated as they are feeding into the machine. Pretty soon we'll be able to see how evenly these ones are fed. It's a little bit off like this just go ahead and snip this off we're gonna we're gonna straighten this up all at the end aren't we so now we have one two and three you're cute this is just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger now we're gonna take row four right side up And I started off by taking it all the way as far back to the needle as I can get it. Then we're going to take row three, right sides down, and feed it through the foot. Could you gather strips three and four, then attach the, those strips to one and two? Um, yeah, you probably could. But then you're dealing with gathers under here. Mm because you you don't have anything flat there so i'm not i haven't tried it that way okay while you're doing that i'm going to show what we talked about at the beginning oh, of I the think right here you Remember want some help? help there should be eight of them and then um i did see your question about the uh felts or the colors so i'm going to get those together to show you as well um so we um talked about the hanger for the tri-stand design. So instead of putting it on the tri-stand hanger, we actually got this different hanger uh, to put those on to display it as more of like a wall hanging or on your door or something like that instead of the tabletop tri-stand display. So we got some of those hangers in. Um, they are from Ackfield and they are $14.99. And then we also talked about the um, gnome, the timber gnome fat, not fat quarter, half yard bundle. So there's seven yard, um, half yard pieces in here um, of all the different uh, pieces from the collection. And those are $34.99. <coughs> and then we talked about the Ginger's Kitchen. So we have that coming up um, as a virtual class. And then we talked about these little cute mini wall hanging pillows. 
Um, and these are made out of felt, and that would be the next question I had, was the different colors of Kimberbell felt. Okay, I'm missing one. Pistachio. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so for the Kimberbell felt, these are new. They um, have the antique white, the pine, the cherry red, the gingerbread, the French pink, the mint, and the um, antique white, I messed up. This is buttermilk. Buttermilk, antique white, and then we are missing the pistachio, which is kind of that light green, um, light green one. You want to tell them how to get to the projects? Yes. A lot of new people again, too. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, so to get to the projects that we do for live, um, you go to our website, which is aboveandbeyondsewing.com, and you go to the calendars tab, and it go down to the events, and then for the date, and it will, um, normally there's a picture up there for you, and then below the picture, there is um, a link for either the directions for the project or um, to get the design um, or however uh, we put it up there, whatever it is we're doing. Okay, so I've got rows one, two, three, and four. How cute. So now we're going to take five. And we're going to put it. I right, can't wait to see her in this. <laughs> right side up. Take it all the way back to the needle. The bottom fabric is the fabric that we'll gather. Now, this is becoming more and more of a challenge. And then we're going to attach it right sides together to one, two, three, number four. Um, no, Lynn, it is the uh, Timber Gnome fabric kit. So we don't have the uh, Ginger's Kitchen fabric kit yet. Um, they're not completed yet. So that is just the Timber Gnome Christmas fabric. How many strips were to get sewn together for each row? Do you want to go over that? Right here. Okay. Okay, so row one, there is one strip. Row two, there is two strips. Row three, there is three strips plus about 12 inches. Row four, there is six strips less about 10 inches. Row five, there are 10 strips less about six inches. And row six, there are 15 plus about 22 inches. So in the directions, it does say um, all of those for you. Cutest project ever. <laughs> okay, so these are some of the gnome fabrics. I'll just open this up again um, so you guys can see them. So this is the one, there's a couple of different gnomes on here. Um, then it has the snowman. The buffalo check with the red and the black, the red snowflake, the black gnome, lumberjack gnome, which is really cute, then the black and white check, buffalo check, and then the white background with the snowflake. So um, there are some other fabrics because um, we have run out of some of these ones, but there are like um, a couple different ones that we could still make bundles with, with a lot of these fabrics, but like some of the gnome, the gnome fabrics might be different, um, but we can always make them make up more. It just might not be all the same fabrics. <laughs> so, 
what is the finished size length of the skirt and what size is it supposed to fit? So this, the instructions are given to fit a three to four year old. Okay. And um, we are going to talk about ways to change those measurements here in just a few minutes when you're going to be able to hear me. Okay, so for those of you who are just joining us, we are making a um, carnation twirly serger skirt. Um, so Kate is just using two fabrics um, and then doing it on the serger. And um, the fabric kits that everybody is talking about is actually these gnome fabric kits. <laughs> Um, so there's not a fabric kit for today's project. This was just a new super cute, um, a super cute fabric line that we got in that we cut into some bundles um, in half yard segments. Okay, so we're getting ready to add our last strip, which of course was the strip that we did do the rolled hem. So the bottom of the skirt will already be hemmed by the time we get finished. So we've got right side up, making sure that you're not cutting off your hem. So you wanna make sure your hem is on the left hand side as you insert the strip. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> Lynn, when you say you would like one fabric KB pack, um, what what are you talking about? Just so I so we know. How much is the ruffling foot? Is it fifty two ninety nine? I believe. Yeah. Fifty two ninety nine for the ruffling foot. And the price on the gnome fabric bundle is thirty four ninety nine. Do you cut the fabric with the width of fabric? Yes. Yes, Elaine, you do. And I actually cut this all on the AccuQuilt cutter. Ooh. With my two and a half inch um, strip cutter. Yes, that is the Timber Gnome fabric kit. Fabric bundle, not kit. And if you've never used a ruffling foot, by the end of this project, you will be a <laughs> pro. Yes, the serger does make it go together pretty quick. But it doesn't have lining? There is no lining, no. I mean, you could probably add a lining if you wanted to. Okay. Or a little underskirt. Mm hmm Or just have the little girl wear a little pair of shorts. And yeah, things. like, <laughs> like kind of leggings type things. So the, um, the little felt pillow disc the embroidery disc that we showed um, is $16. We'll
will the pattern that we put up there have the size adjustments and stuff? There is no size adjustments. There's just suggestions on how you can adjust it, which I am going to talk about here in just a few minutes. Okay. Don't be sorry, Lynn. I just wanted to make sure we were getting you what you were ordering. So you cut the two and a half inch strip finished or the die is two and a half finished? No, it's the strips are cut two and a half inches. Okay, so the strips are cut to the two and a half inch, which is a two inch finish, right? Technically? Technically, if you were using the strips to put in a quilt. A yes. quarter, oh, yeah, so it is the two and a half inch strip die that she used to cut the strips. Lynn says the pile of Russell ruffles reminds her of an ice cream sundae with loads of whipped cream on it. <laughs> it does look pretty. Look how cute. Yes, we are. Okay. So a couple of the things, I'm just going to go over the things that I talked about at the beginning. Um, so we, um, we got some of these really cute Ackfield uh, hangers in. Um, and they, we've seen this that you can put the tri-stand designs on them. So instead of having it be like a tabletop display, um, you can have it more of like a door hanger or a wall hanging. Um, so that I w we just showed everybody that so you could do something different with the tri stands, which I think is really cute to have options. Um, and then we talked about the Make It Merry mini wall hanging pillows. Um, these would be even cute um, if you didn't even put ribbon on them, but you used like the Ackfield five inch hangers with the clips on them. Those would be really cute too. Um, and then we talked about the Timber Gnome um, half yard fabric bundle. So it has seven half yard cuts of the fabric line. And then we talked about Ginger's Kitchen, which is not a brand new design, but it is um, just kind of fitting for the holidays coming up. Um, and we are doing that class November 4th and November 18th. So it'll be a virtual class. Um, and I just talked about that there's a fabric kit, there is an embellishment kit. So any of like this 3D stuff on here, the glitter, the mylar, the felt, um, those are all included in the embellishment kit. And then there is a disc for it as well. And then um, the class is $20 unless you purchase from us, then we honor that class for you. <laughs> there you okay, have it. We're actually going to go, go take this to the cutting table though, okay? So how much fabric is used in the skirt? Um, Roughly. <laughs> See what I did there? 18 yards. <laughs> um, we'd have to add up each one of these. Can you add these up, Petra? Sure. Um, I'll find out for you. Two and a half strips. Just add up all of those, times them by two and a half, and then divide it by 36. Yes, this skirt would be cute in Christmas fabric, I agree. Oh yeah, wouldn't that be cute? Okay, so let's 
So in order to do the next step on the skirt, the first thing you need to do is to um, basically square up these ends. Okay, so you'll see that you're gonna have uneven ends. <laughs> and so what you're going to do is literally just cut this off. It's going to go into a center back seam anyway. So for right now, we are just going to uh, Yes, the ruffling foot does fit the regular um, sergers as well. So there's a ruffling foot for the four threads and then there's, is there, is it different? Ruffling it, foot for the it eight is a threads. different one, but it's the same, same concept. So what you want to do is you want to get two center backs like this. Uh, the Kimberbell felt are twelve by eighteen. 18. So the Kimberbell, um, there's eight different colors for the Kimberbell felts, and they are twelve by eighteen inches. Oh, I'm not sure that this is going to be long enough for Lily. Okay, so we're just going to neaten up this other side. So this is what we end up with. So let's talk about size on this. So they say that six two and a half inch strips will fit roughly a three to four year old. The actual length on the measurement here is about 12 and a half inches. Yeah, right at 13 inches. So this gives you 13 inches, but there's gonna be an elastic band that's gonna go on here that's two inches. So it's gonna be about a finished length of about 15 inches. So your choices are, I personally wouldn't recommend another row because another row is gonna take you from 15 strips to probably 25 strips and that's a lot of fabric. So the recommendation is that you widen your strips. So instead of working with a two and a half inch strip, you work with a three inch strip. And then that would give you an extra three inches in length because you've got six strips, okay? So it does say you can remove a strip, but it really doesn't talk about adding a strip. So I don't know personally that I would want to add an extra strip on here. And I think you can all see now why doing that rolled hem before we attach that last row. It's about three yards. About three yards of fabric is what's in here. So let's go look how we get this finished. I'm really curious. Look <laughs> tricky. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you you want to get some decorative type of elastic. So I actually got this at Walmart. It's a Dritz elastic. It is um, one and three quarter inch. It's a metallic elastic. And what you want to do is you want to cut this one inch smaller than the child's waist and the reason for that is obviously you want it to stretch but there's a lot of fabric so the skirt's going to be a little bit weighted so what you're going to do is you are going to put right side of elastic to right side of the top do you remember we finished that first row and you are going to clip this in place You're then going to follow this elastic around to the end of the strip and pin it in place at the end. You're then going to find the halfway point on the elastic And you probably need some pin pins here. You're going to find the halfway point on the elastic and you're going to find the halfway point on the top of the band. 
Do you need a specific ruffling foot for a sewing machine, not a serger? Um, one that works with your brand of machine. So I've got the halfway point on the bend and I'm now gonna pin it to the halfway point on the elastic. <laughs> Boy clothes are much simpler, but they're not <laughs> as cute. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to take the halfway point from here. And mark it. And take the halfway point between the center and the beginning. So you're basically quartering your project. So we're just going to get this all pinned in place. And now I know that this much elastic needs to get stretched into that much fabric. Christine's looking at me. <laughs> okay, I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and put my standard surging foot back on. Patrick, will you get me some pins, please? Yeah. And we are going to take the differential feed off. We want the regular movement of the feed dogs. And because I am gonna be putting a lot of pressure onto this elastic, I've changed my mind. Even though they say that you should not use pins with a serger, I am going to pin my elastic in place. <laughs> Would you make clothes? Bridget wants to know if you'll make clothes for her. <laughs> um, the other <laughs> thing we are going to do, we do not want to damage our elastic. So we are going to be turning the knife off okay so to turn your knife off you're going to turn this till it says lock and then that will lock that in place and I want to sew with my elastic facing me so the elastic is going to be on top, top side. and my fabric is going to be underneath and the first thing I'm going to do is just sink my stitch into you really can't start putting pressure on your elastic until you have got those stitches sunk in. So what I need to do is I need to stretch my elastic. So I'm just stretching this as I go. Are you using any sort of special needle? No, just my regular needle. And here is the finished Oh edge. my gosh, how cute. Isn't that cute? Yes. So, but you do have to put a lot of pressure on this elastic. Of course, I'm making this for a, um, for a pretty small little girl with a small waist. So, Yes, the serger is very nice. Makes makes it 
I would say look easy, but for me it would not be easy. Yeah, this project would be really hard to do without a serger. Yeah. Did you say you're using any sort of special needle? No. Okay. I'm just using a, um, a size 90. Okay. It was three yards total of fabric, right? Not three yards of each. Correct. So three yards total, um, Roseanne. That's according to Patrick's calculations. I have not looked at those <laughs> calculations. By the so. way, ladies, don't trust that at all. I just was like, on the calculator, crazy. Oh. I think I got it right though. So I just had to multiply the number of strips by two and a half, right? And then, yeah. Yeah and then divide by 36. Uh -huh. Okay, so they right. can trust it. Okay. So now waistband <laughs> is attached. Wow, I'm impressed. You impressed? I am. I don't think this is gonna be long enough for the little granddaughter I thought it was gonna be for. I think so. You think so? Yeah. Okay. It is really fluffy. So now what we're going to do is we are going to put right sides together and we're going to stitch our back seam. And I am gonna clip this. And we do wanna go ahead and put our um, blade back up. Am I running over? No, you're good. I'm excited to see it done. So when we are joining these Ooh. together, we want to make sure that our strips are matching up. It's going to be so cute. That's really cute. Yeah, everyone say she could wear tights if it's too short. Well, it's not going to be too short. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, mm -hmm. that, I would let Cora wear that. No, is I think Amanda, it'll be good. Is Amanda watching? Mm, I haven't seen her. I love it. Cora would love it too. <laughs> well, you have a search about. I know, but I, no time. <laughs> Roseanne said it'll fit her granddaughter if it doesn't fit Lily. <laughs> well, I do have a younger granddaughter other than Lily, so that's why I'm wondering if I should make this one for the no, younger No, I think it'll fit Lily. It'll be too big for the younger one. Just saying. Okay, so we're going to put our blade back up. We're going to put our blade back up. We're going to put our and I have um, put my blade back up. They want Patrick to model it. <laughs> <laughs> he might get it on one thigh. He would look darling in it. Sorry, I got the wrong color shirt though. <laughs> clashes. It does clash. And you wouldn't want to have any plus, clashes. Plus, you can't wear white and pink after September 1st, right? Isn't that what you guys told me? Okay, so we have a tail here. We will want to feed that tail back through here, and I will want to feed this tail back through here. It does recommend that you go in on your sewing machine and sew a straight stitch, just right down the side of that to reinforce that seam. If you make one skirt for one granddaughter, you will make another one for the other granddaughter. You I know the grandma rule. <laughs> I know, I'm making two Elsa dresses right now. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. It oh my gosh, so it's so cute. cute. It's cute. Oh, it's really cute. I do want to try it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not trying it on. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I am opening it up. 